to examine a little bit closer our sphinx or seal pose now this variation realistically most people could get away with doing sphinx which i think is a little bit more relaxing but some people want to go into seal and it's good to offer, offer the variation for those that want to go there now with our sphinx pose it's really important to understand that we want to extend the spine first so really do understand that and you could feel this in your body with me that when we come into this position just by thrusting your hips forward you're not extending your spine. So that's just collapsing in your lower lumbar. So if you're just lying on your front, you just lift your shoulders up. So that's the same thing. You know, it's just thrusting your hips forward. Then you're not actually going to extend that spine. Totally different experience. So feel the two of them. Push your hips forward. Feel what that sensation is. Remember, bones coming closer together. That's going to be compression. You're not really feeling that much in the front body. So you're not getting tension, which is going to be through your target area. That's not beneficial, what's happening there. Nothing is going to make that like you're not going to be able to change that in any way. That's just pure bone hitting bone. Now our target area is going to be through the front line of the spine, you know, through our rectus abdominis, through our hip flexors a little bit realistically in this. But let's feel the feeling of extending our spine. So feel the side edges of the waist pull in. So this is your transverse abdominis. Lift your uh, armpits up. Feel your side ribs lift up as well. Then you're starting to feel your heart turn up towards the sky. Now start to squeeze your shoulder blades together just a little bit more. And you're not thrusting your hips forward whatsoever. You're just extending your spine. You're going to start to allow your chin to go forward and up as well. And then start to feel your heart lifting, back of the heart lifting, back of the heart lifting, back of the heart lifting. And now you're starting to get maybe a sensation along the spine, but it's a little bit more evenly distributed. And then coming back out again, just push your hips forward and feel that difference. So we don't want to just push the hips forward in this position. So you don't want to come lying onto your front and then lift yourself up because that's the same thing as just thrusting your hips forward. So we need to come into this safely. Realistically, the deepest spinal extension you're going to have, you come into it the first cat-cow you have in your first yoga class. So that, that's as long as you can get in your spinal extension. Backward bend has a lot more to do with hip flexors and then getting into your latissimus dorsi as well and opening out through your pec major and your pec minor. And that's what you really work on from that point onwards to get into your deeper wheel variations, etc. So let's find a safe engagement of the spine. Let's extend it first. So take your cat cow. So drop the belly down, raise the chin, look up. Draw your heart forward through your arms. Now you've got that variation. You've now stabilized and extended your spine safely. Now you start to walk the legs back, maintain that alignment, and you've got that extension of the spine, and you can place your elbows down onto the bolster like so. Bolster is just supporting um, the, the ribs as well, or if you like, you can place two blocks out in front of you, and again, you would come into that again, so come back onto all fours, and then extend your spine safely, draw your heart forward, lock that, stabilize that, and then elbows down, walking yourself back, keep that extension, and elbows will go on top of the blocks. So like I say, you don't really need to come into seal because you can prop yourself up enough with the elbows down to come into a pretty comfortable position that it's finding the exact same alignment. Now the hands out in front of you, that's your seal variation. I didn't get any deeper in that position, but I will have to work harder in that position to hold this. Now again, like I said, you can't get more out of your spine. It's bone hitting on bone. So you, the target area is not the back. That's nothing. We can't do anything with that. That's like saying, if we come into our cat cow, if we keep doing it, keep doing it, we're gonna get more out of your back. But you know, the reason why you can't go further is the spinous processes of the vertebrae are pressing into each other, so that's it. Unless you get surgery and like cut them off, you can't get anything else out of that. So what we're really targeting is through the front line of the spine. So this is all our kidney pathway. And then our hip flexor, which is our kidney pathway as well. Your rectus abdominis, which is going to be in your, your stomach pathway as well. I quite often will use sphinx or seal to open through the, the heart. That's what I say. Because it has this real broadening feeling through the heart. It's one of those ones where, yep, there's a definite meridian pathway, stomach, kidney but then you could kind of use it as well for your heart opener because it's kind of tricky to find enough poses for some of those upper arm 
um, meridians like your, your metal sequence and your fire sequence. So I use it for that as well. Again, compression points are just along the spine. Um, and that's mainly what you're going to get. No pain in this position, sensation more at the front body. If anything, you get sensation evenly distributed along the spine as opposed to all in your lumbar spine, which is just going to be a collapsing, which is not good for you because you need to extend the spine because the spine needs to move in a tensegral movement where every element of the spine engages together as opposed to a collapsing. So that's actually what it, people mean when they say collapsing. Anyway, so that's going to be your sphinx, sphinx or seal variation. Oh.